Hi, this is Stan Lyle with Master Math. During the lesson, you're going to come to some You Try It slides where you're asked to do problems that relate to the lesson. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. I hope you have a really good time today. Today we're going to talk about graphing linear equations using tables and using the intercepts. And you're going to need to understand what the x-intercept is, what the y-intercept is. And in order to make this kind of real, let's pretend that you've got a business. Let's pretend that you make really lovely scented candles and you found a wonderful gift shop that will allow you to sell your candles in their store. You and your sister make scented candles and have made an arrangement with a very busy gift shop to sell them. The gift shop will charge you $100 per month for a good location within the store to display your candles. You'll, al you'll also pay them a commission on each sale and after the commission and other costs, you'll make $2.80 for each candle sold. Create an equation to, de to determine how much profit you will make each month, and we'll call that P for profit per month, for varying numbers of candles sold. And C will represent the number of candles sold in any particular month. All right. Well, there's a lot of information there, and it's a little bit confusing, so let's see you see, see it. Let's circle the numbers, and we'll also circle the variables. And then let's underline the question. And let's read the, the question again. The question is, create an equation to determine how much profit you'd make each month. And we're going to call that P. So P is what we're trying to figure out. We're trying to figure out what P equals. So let's start our equation with that. P equals something. Well, that takes care of the P. Now we got to use the $100, the $2.80, and the C. And I wonder how we we'll use those. Well, let's think. How much profit we make? Well, we make $2.80 times every candle we sold, we sold, or every candle we sold is C. So we make $2.80 times C, 2.8 C. But we have to pay the shop $100 each month. So we have to subtract $100 from what we've made. So our equation is our profits equal 2.8 times C minus 100. All right, well, we've got an equation. P equals 2.8C minus 100. Now, I'd like to graph that equation. That would be helpful. I could look at the graph and maybe understand this business a little bit better. So let's, let's do that. Let's graph it. And we're going to graph it using two methods. We're going to graph it using tables, and we're going to graph it using intercepts. And in both of these cases, we're going to create some points on the graph and connect those points and create the line. Now, if I've got one point, I can run a line through it. Actually, I could run another line through it, and another one, and another one. I could run an infinite number of lines through that point. But if I've got two points, there's only one line that will go through them both. So we're going to try to create at least two points for each of these equations. Well, now let's try graphing these equations by using a couple of points. And one way to get the points is with a table. I can create a table of x values and y values. Well, what I did was create a table of c values and p values. But that'll work, because in this case, what's normally my x-axis, we're labeling c for number of candles sold. And my y-axis, we've labeled p for uh, the profits for the month. So I've got a, 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 an X and a Y column here, but it's really C and P. My C, number of candles sold, and my output, P, profits. 
And normally, I'm going to input values that are real easy to calculate. I'm going to usually use 0, 1, and 2. But in this case, I used 100 and 200. And I did that because I've got a great, I got a decimal here, and I've got a great big number I'm subtracting from it. So it just seemed to me to be easier to use 0, 100, and 200. Now I've got to calculate my P. And I do that by inputting my, my C value into the equation and calculating what P would be. And when C equals 0, P equals minus 100. And when C equals 100, P equals 180. And when C equals 200, P equals 460. Well, now I've got three points. I only need two points to draw a line, but I pick three, and that the third point is really just a double check. If you've got three points and you've done your math wrong, it'll become obvious when you try to draw that line. So let's plot where those three points are. I've got 0 and minus 100. I've got 100 and 180. And then I've got 200 and 460. Three points. And if I draw a line through them, they line up exactly correct, so I'm pretty comfortable that that line's accurate. And you'll see I put an arrow at the right end of the line because I can sell as many candles as I want, theoretically, and I can make as much money as I want. So it'll keep going up indefinitely in that direction. But the line stops at zero candles, and that's because I probably can't sell negative candles. Now you try this one. Hit the pause button, do the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. All right, I'm supposed to graph 2x plus 2y equals 8 using a table. And the first thing I want to do is to modify that equation, 2x plus 2y equals 8. I want to change it so it reads y equals something. That way I can input a value into x and calculate what y equals. All right, to modify this equation so it reads y equals something, I've got to isolate the y. That means I've got to move that 2x to the other side of the equation. So I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides of the equation, and now it reads 2y equals 8 minus 2x. Now I need to change it so it's just a single y, so I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by 2, and when I do that, I've got y equals 4 minus x. Now I'm set to go. Now I just have to use my input-output table and calculate various values for x and y. And I'm going to start with real easy input values. I'm going to use x values of 0, 1, and 2. Why make life difficult? Use nice, easy numbers. And then I'm going to input 0 into the equation, y equals 4 minus x, or 4 minus 0 in this case. And when x equals 0, y equals 4. When x equals 1, y equals 3. And when x equals 2, y equals 2. Now I can plot those points on the, the coordinate plane, and they'd look like that. And then I can draw a line between those points, and it'd look like that. And you'll see I put an arrow on either end of that line, because I have no reason to believe that there are any limits on either x or y. x can go on in both directions, positive and negative, forever, and so can y. Well, now let's talk about graphing a linear equation using intercepts. Intercepts. What are intercepts? Well, let's discuss that. First of all, let's remember that this graph, this coordinate plane that we've got on here, we labeled what's traditionally the x-axis. We labeled it C for candles sold. And we labeled the y-axis P for profits. But let's remember that that horizontal axis is the x-axis and the vertical axis is the y-axis. And we'll talk in terms of the x-axis and the y-axis. And let's draw a line on this coordinate plane, just any old line. And you'll notice that this line 
crosses both the x-axis and the y-axis. Here's the x-axis. And this line crosses the x-axis right there. This line goes across. It intercepts that x-axis right there. And it intercepts the y-axis right up here. Here's the y-axis. Here's the line. And this line intercepts the y-axis right there. And we call, call those two points the intercepts. That's the x-intercept, and that's the y-intercept. Well, here's our line for the equation P equals 2.8C uh, minus 100. And you'll see there's an x-intercept and a y-intercept here as well. Right there is where the line crosses the y-axis. That's my y-intercept. And it also crosses the x-axis right about there. And you know that both of those points, the x-intercept and the y-intercept, have an ordered pair, an x-y value, that identifies the location of that point on the coordinate grid. My x-intercept has an x value, and it's some number along this x-axis. looks like it might be a number less than 40. And it has a y value, and that y value is 0. And my y-intercept has an x and a y value as well. The y value is some number on the y-axis, and the x value is 0. My x-intercept has a location of some value of x, plus a zero value for y. And my y-intercept has a zero value for x and some value for y. At my x-intercept, my y-value is zero. At my y-intercept, my x-value is zero. I can use that fact to calculate the location of those two points and graph that equation. So let's do that. Again, I know that at my x value, at my, excuse me, at my x intercept, this point right here, my y value is 0. So if I set y equal to 0 and solve for x, I'll know the ordered pair that represents that point, the x intercept. So 0 equals 2.8x minus 100. I'm going to solve this for x. I'm going to first add 100 to both sides of the equation, and I'll get 100 equals 2.8x. Now I got to divide both sides of the equation by 2.8 in order to isolate x, and I get 35.7 equals x. So this point right here is the x-intercept. And the x value at the x intercept is 35.7. So that point is 35.70. Now let's do the same thing for the y intercept. At the y intercept, my x value is 0. So the equation would read y equals 2.8 times 0 minus 100. Well, 2.8 times 0 is 0, so y equals minus 100. And my y-intercept's ordered pair is 0 minus 100. Well, if I did that and calculated the location of the, both the x-axis intercept and the y-axis intercept, I could draw a line between those two points, and that would be the line for the equation. All right, well, we've got this graph, but what good is it to us? Can it tell us anything? Well, I think it can. Let's interpret it a little bit. I can see that there, the line does not go into the second quadrant or the third quadrant. The line stops right there. There's no portion of the line in the second quadrant or the third quadrant. And that makes sense because to be in the second or the third quadrant, I've got to have negative x values. My x values have got to be negative. And that would imply I sold negative candles, and I can't sell negative candles. So, consequently, my entire line is in the fourth quadrant and the first quadrant. Now let's look at the fourth quadrant. In the fourth quadrant, I've got 
positive X values or positive candle sales, but I've got negative Y values, negative P values, negative profits. I'm losing money. I don't want to be in the fourth quadrant. It's going to cost me to have this business if I'm in the fourth quadrant. I need to sell at least 35.7 candles in order to make money. In the first quadrant, I'm selling more than 35.7 candles, and I'm making money. You try this one. The height of a rectangle is X, the width is Y, and the perimeter is 56 inches. Write an equation that represents the relationship between X, Y, and the perimeter. Calculate the X and the Y intercepts, and then graph the equation. Now think about it. The perimeter is the distance all the way around a uh, rectangle. And in this rectangle, we have a height of x and a width of y. So how do I write an equation that shows the relationship of x, y, and the perimeter? Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit your forward key to move on to my answer. Did you get this one? I hope so. It says the height of a rectangle is x, the width is y, and the perimeter is 56 inches. So the perimeter equals 2 times the height plus 2 times the width, or 2x plus 2y equals 56. Now, at my x intercept, my y value equals 0. At my y intercept, my x value equals 0. So let's figure out my y intercept first and set x equal to 0. 2 times 0 plus 2 times y equals 56. Or 2y equals 56. If I divide both sides by 2, I get y equals 28. And I could plot that point right there. My y-intercept is a y-value of 28. And the ordered pair that identifies that location is 0, 28. How about my x-intercept? Well, my x-intercept, my y-value equals 0. So 2x plus 2 times 0 equals 56. And again, x equals 28. And the location of the x-intercept is 28, 0. So I could plot that right there. And then I could draw a line between those points. And that line would represent all the combinations of width and height of a rectangle that would uh, total 56 inches for the perimeter. That's our lesson on graphing linear equations using tables and using intercepts. And I hope you learned a lot. Now it's time to test your skills. Go to www.mastermath.info and you'll find worksheets and quizzes on this subject. I hope you had a good time today. I hope you learned a lot. And I hope we see you again real soon.